The garden is looking really good, and we're hoping that we can harvest and preserve enough food to last us through the winter to keep our time and our dollars out of the grocery store as much as possible. But even with as hard as we work in our garden, there's no way we can control it. So we're just gonna have to dig in, pun intended, and see what we can find, and then after we've harvested a bunch of stuff, we're gonna go in the house and show you how we preserve a lot of it too. Shelly has been harvesting a ton of tomatoes. She's doing a whole bunch more now. She brought a big laundry basket out to harvest those. She's making a lot of her sauces and stuff. The potato tops are starting to die off, so it's time to dig those. We're gonna have to see how those did under our leaf mulch. And we've got carrots to harvest. And one thing that we're excited about and a little apprehensive about is digging the sweet potatoes out of that raised bed over there. I really think they should have done well, but it's something new that we're trying, putting stuff in raised beds, and so we're just gonna have to dig them up and see how they did. We're also gonna be picking a lot of these cherry tomatoes. The kids do most of that. And the raspberries. Shelly's been bringing a whole bunch of these in, and there's still a lot more to come. You know, one thing that's really cool that I'm seeing while I'm out here right now is there is bees just buzzing all over these, and I can see that not all of them are honeybees, but definitely some honeybees are up here, and I just think that's really cool. We've got my hives down there by the woods, and bees are coming up here and pollinating the raspberries for us. Amish paste ones, these right here are my all time favorite. They're sweet and they're meaty and they're huge. Sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I think in most of our garden videos, Tirza ends up with a dish of cherry tomatoes. So by the way, if you're needing to get tomato cages, these tomato cages are so awesome. They are square folding tomato cages. We used to use the kind that were just homemade out of like fence wire, round ones. I had to have like a big mound of them. And then even those ones that stack on top of each other, they don't stand up as well in the garden and they make a really big stack too. I am laying these tomatoes out. Some of them aren't like totally dead ripe and I like picking them that way because if I wait until they're dead ripe, they're a lot more likely, like this one's dead ripe and it has some spots on it and then they just don't last as long. So I like to pick them just a little bit under ripe and I lay them out and then I can can them and we can eat them kind of at our leisure instead of bringing in a whole basket full of dead ripe ones that I have to can right away. She wants to take them all the German bag she's in the back. Used to, she's used to helping me like when I'm ready to can them, she puts them in oh. a bowl for me, so she's not getting it. No, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on the chair. Something we did not do was cut the grass down in between the raised well, beds. I couldn't because the tendrils were way out hanging over oh. and I didn't want to wreck them. This is awkward. Here's the moment of truth. Oh, I think they're, oh. They're definitely nicer than the ones in the garden. We have in the past done the sweet potatoes where the potatoes aren't just at the base and it was so much work. It was awful. Cause the Cause tendrils would- dig would, like everywhere. Tendrils would grow out and then they would root in the soil and grow potatoes out there. But we purposely picked ones that grow at the base. Yeah, it'll say it like in the description. I want to be really careful with the digging fork, like I'm hitting them, but when you hit them, you make big gouges or break them, they won't last as long in storage. So. You have to, well, they won't last at all. You have to eat them right away. There are some scrapes that will like get kind of a scab over them and yeah. that they will be okay, but not like... Not when you chop it. Not when like you that. chop it in half. I said this in another video, but one of the handiest things to have in the garden is a really good pair of scissors. Nice, solid, sturdy one. This is more like out of the tool section at Home Depot or something, not just your average scissors. So get yourself one. We're getting a ton of tomatoes from our garden right now, so I am canning a whole bunch of marinara sauce, turning those tomatoes into something we can use all winter long for pizza and pasta. Potatoes this year are slightly underwhelming. I mean, it's not like they did bad. For some reason this year, like the plants themselves didn't get as big and bushy. But the plants that are bigger have way more potatoes on them. They're not green though, which is amazing because then they'll store really well. Oh, hey, cowboy, what's up, buddy? Down. Yep, stay down, cowboy. 
Oh, the one thing I did try this year was I planted the whole potato rather than cutting them up. Oh, and we were hoping we'd even get we more We were hoping potatoes. we'd get more. And maybe this wasn't a fair trial, but hmm. I certainly didn't get more. Okay, well the red ones are doing better. <laughs> So we got this double row dug. There's one more double row to do. But I'm not sure if we're gonna get it done this evening. Anyways, it did turn out pretty good. We got a lot of nice sized spuds here. There's a lot of small ones too. So these have to be taken into the house and sorted out because it's the big ones that'll store all winter long. The little ones you gotta use pretty fast. You gotta use them fresh because they won't last very long to store in the root cellar. So as soon as we get these potatoes out of the way, we're gonna go dig some carrots over there. No, actually the carrots are up by the house, but that's okay. Well, there's some carrots over there too. Yeah, but those aren't ready yet. <laughs> Fine then, okay, we're gonna go dig some carrots over there. <laughs> Here's the carrot bed. It's looking really nice. Pretty excited because I'm pretty sure there's gonna be some big carrots down there. Uh, Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, these carrots don't break off like the big long ones that go down so deep. And so you don't have to worry about breaking them near as much when you're digging them. These are Danver half longs. Yes. And so they're more short and stout. Check out this soil. I mean, it just falls through your fingers and it's from all of this leaf mulch all summer long. It's just gorgeous. You too. We have grown lots and lots of carrots. We did farmer's markets for a while and we grew tons of carrots for that. We've had different soils. When we first started our garden, it was really hard soil. It's gotten looser over time with all the compost we put in here and stuff. And one thing that I love about having looser soil is being able to just pull the carrots out. There is that really satisfying pop when the carrot comes out. And it's so much easier to pull the carrots out than to have to dig everything and get piles of dirt everywhere and stuff. Mm -hmm. Carrots? This one's a nice big one. I got a big one. I've got a whole bunch of veggies that need to be put away. I had a whole table of potatoes that I dug the other day and they've been down here curing on a table. So I just filled this crate with those. So this is what I'll be starting with. Here I have about six crates of onions that have been curing for a few weeks. I let them dry in the sun. Me and the girls are at home this morning and since the men are at work, we decided that we are going to bring in the onions before it rains today. It would be nice to wait for them to help us, but since it's supposed to rain around noon, we're going to try to do it ourselves. Look at this one. First onion of the season. The way you know that onions are ready to pull is when at least half of the tops have fallen over. We spread out sheets and lay the onions on there. You wanna let them cure for about three days with the stem on, and then you wanna go through and chop that off and let it cure for another week or so, and then you put them in crates and set them in the basement. In my opinion, the key to success with growing nice big onions is all wrapped up in three things. Number one, use lots of compost. Number two, plant onion plants, not the sets. And then number three is planting them nice and far apart. I highly recommend this book, Root Cellaring by Mike and Nancy Booble. It really has tons of information in it and I'll see if Cody can link that for you guys. Then I brought them down here in the basement to let them dry out even more. And then I put them into these crates and I'm gonna stick them into the root cellar here. I'm not very picky about how I cure my white potatoes. I lay them out in a row and I let them dry out for a few days and then I put them in crates and put them straight in my root cellar and they store just fine. I'm ready to put these carrots into the fridge. I put them into just grocery bags and then I actually just tape the tops shut because I have found that if any air can get to your carrots, they just don't last as long. They like shrivel up and get kind of like rubbery. You can like bend them and you want a nice crisp carrot if you're anything like me. Hey, 
Benny. I hear bees buzzing. They're everywhere and they're scaring me. I love it. So what all are you going to do with these raspberries? Mostly make lots of jam because we ran out last year. I did eight batches of jam last summer and we ate them all. And so I'm probably going to do at least 10 batches of jam. Today I'm going to make a pie. I'm also just putting like gallons of them in freezer bags and stuck, sticking them in the freezer for smoothies and to put on top of yogurt and just anything like that. Can you pick them? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you got the whole plant. These raspberries are way bigger this year and I'm wondering if it's not because of all the trellising we did because other years they're like hanging down on the ground and the bigger ones were always up top last year and now this year all of them are big so I think that Yeah, we added this extra wire after they had been already growing quite a bit and a lot of them were hanging down, not all of them were up so we added this extra wire now they're pretty much all sticking up. And they're a lot nicer. All right, well, I'm gonna leave you to picking and I can't wait for that pie tonight. All right, I'm gonna use some of these raspberries that I picked this afternoon to make a pie. Hey, good looking. What you got cooking? Shoveling it in there, Kate. <laughs> We're back at the harvesting again, and it's time to dig the sweet potatoes. There's a bunch of them here in this row. Here, cowboy. Good dog. Cowboy is doing great. He's loving his little log cabin. It's a lot of fun having him around. The kids love him. While Izzy went to get a camera battery, we dug up a couple plants, and it's not looking too promising. It looks like they've been in the ground too long or something, which is really strange because this is not real late in the year. I even think I remember reading when we first got started to leave sweet potatoes in the ground until the tops get hit by a frost and turn black. That would obviously be way too long, so not sure what the deal is. This is just the first couple plants though, so hopefully the rest of them look nicer than these. Doesn't look, look quite as bad. If I was to be honest, I hate digging sweet potatoes. I feel like I have to dig up the whole entire garden and go on a treasure hunt for these things. One. They're so ugly. They're just like all split up and all brown and gross. I don't even think we can use them. So this is not looking so good. And this is the food that we want to have to be able to store for the winter to be able to eat without going to the grocery store so often. New plan, we're starting over here. So maybe this will boost our spirits if there's some nice potatoes here. If there's not nice potatoes here. We might just go <laughs> in and cry. We might forget this, till them all under. We would starve if we were pioneers. All right, that's Dude. not like ginormous, but that's, that's a, a nice that's sweet like potato. That's the best sweet potato ever. This kind of sweet potato right here. And look, here's another nice, one. Nice, nice color. This will store in the root cellar all winter long. Yes. These five big sweet potatoes were all at the base of that one plant. I really wish we knew which variety this is because that's completely different. So that took me like 10 seconds yeah. to dig that 
to dig all this out without needing to dig a big, huge hole. That is so good. So besides those nice plants that were on the end, this row, whole row right here was pretty much a fail. But I'm still thinking those over there are gonna be better ones. That's a nice one. That's a pretty good one. This does not look like much of a winter store of sweet potatoes. Okay, but we still have, we already have like three crates inside. True, so we have. That are full. So we have like three crates inside that were from the raised bed over there. Those did really well. We've got these here and at least half of these. At least half of them are really Are gonna be good and they'll last. All right, so what now, babe? I just need your help to carry all these tomatoes in. That's a lot of tomatoes. Especially if you're bringing one in like that, like every few days. This here is my basil plant. I harvest basil just kind of on and off throughout the season and dry it. Cody made me this awesome drying rack in my basement. And so I just lay the basil on screens and once it's dry, I crush it and put it into glass jars to see me through the winter. These screens, you just slide them out and you can put your herbs on here to dry. It just makes drying herbs and teas so easy. I like to dry two different kinds of peppermint tea for when we have like the flu or a cold, things like that. And I also like to dry lots of basil. I'm gonna be swapping out all of this dried tea with basil. All summer long, I'm swapping out my dried herbs with fresh herbs on those trays down in the basement and once they're dry I just strip the leaves off and I either just take my hand and go like this to crush them or I will put the dried leaves into the blender and pulse it a few times and then it's the perfect consistency for tea or for in the case of basil for seasoning. I like a man. We try to homestead as simply and efficiently as possible. But even still, if doing all the things just looks big to you and you wanna see what we think are the five most important things to grow that are the easiest to put away, check out this video next.